we wanted to have this conversation because there's been an evolution uh, credit card collection capacities, right? And uh, we are now calling the technologies that you've already deployed and has really more of our 1.0 model. We had another client have a, a, a much more ambitious sort of thing they wanted to do, came up with another architecture that leverages our CRE tools to be able to get more control over the whole branding and produce uh, a, a fair amount of additional kind of complexity as needed. As we thought about that, we called that now the 2.0 model. So we'll still have the 1.0 kind of model, but we're going to ask Matthew to do just a basic demonstration. Okay, Matthew, are you ready? I am ready. The starting point is a distribution system that will send out emails to customers that have open balances. Here we've got a customer. They had an open balance today, and inside their sandbox, I ran our distribution system, so an email was indeed sent out. Let's have a look at the email. So what you see here are two links. This link here, firstly, is just their standard customer statement PDF. This is the important link that will open up our utility to accept credit cards. So this is the first page of our utility. And it looks like a customer statement, but you can select invoices that you would like to pay and credit and or credit memos that you would like to apply against the account balance. We'll go ahead and select some. And we see that as I'm selecting, there's a payment amount that appears on the right, and also there's a total payment amount, which is, right, if it's a credit memo, it comes through as a negative. If, it, if it's an invoice, it comes through as a positive and adds up here to the total payment amount. So this is a first page. There's a series of other pages that are coming that I will show you, but before going there, I just want to give you a view of what's coming up. This here is the first page, which is the customer statement. Upon submission, we're going to get to a, to a page where we can actually accept credit cards. And then from there, if the credit card uh, transaction was successful, we get to a success page. If it was unsuccessful, we get to a failure page. Final thing, though, on this page is that we have some automation to quickly select what the customer would like to pay off. You could go ahead and just select everything or select balances within the aging categories. This customer only has transactions that are older than 91 days because we're in sandbox things. The data is getting old. Usually there would be current 1 to 30 and so forth balances available. And here in the drop down, you can quickly go and select those to pay them off. I'm actually, okay, I'm going to go back and, and start that again because in Sandbox, we're running on the credit card processor in test mode. The total amount has to be below $1,000 or else we get an error back. I've got one, it's less than 1,000. We have, firstly, the summary of, of what's been selected. All right, we see the total amount corresponds to what we selected. And we see the credit cards on file. So these are credit cards inside the customer's credit card wallet inside NetSuite. What we're allowing is for the customer to do a little bit of management of their credit card information. They could remove cards. They can choose to add cards that, that are inside the wallet. They can choose to make a card the default card or unselect it as the default card. So what I'm going to do here just to demonstrate things a little bit is I'm, I want to keep the default card, but, oh, I don't want that other card anymore, so I'm going to delete it. So I go ahead and it, and it prompts you, are you sure you want to delete it? Sure, let's go ahead. So now what's happening is communicating with the back end, it's doing the actual deletion, and then it, it brings us back. So now I can select the default card, and to process a credit card payment, I always have to provide some extra information. The CVV is the first one, and the street address, and zip code. Now let's go ahead and charge. And if the transaction is successful, this is going to navigate us to the success page, which is what occurred. 
if it had been unsuccessful, we would have gone to a failure page with, with a message for the user. Inside NetSuite in the back end, there's, there's a payment record that was just created and I've got the number for that payment record. And now what the user can do is they can send an email to themselves. This is just gonna be an email of the confirmation of the payment. So here the email has been sent out and I can go back to the customer record, I can refresh. And here's the email that just came in. So here, here was a payment that was above a thousand. Um, so inside test mode, you get back an error and the user sees the reason for the decline. And what they have is the possibility to return to the review and pay page and update the credit card information and resubmit. There's some more stuff that we built around the distribution. And I just wanna briefly show you how that there works. So we've got a MapReduce script and what it does, is it creates a custom record and the custom record is just gonna hold the date that it was sent out, whether or not it successfully sent out or not and the link. And we're seeing here currency. This is one last element that, that I'd like to bring to your attention is that customers in principle could have transactions in various currencies. We support that. And then on the customer record, um, what you'll see are links. By the way, those custom records, they appear here in a sub list on the, on the customer record. And you'll get links per currency to be able to pay off transactions in various currencies. Can you do this? Two things I'd like you to do. I'd like you to start this customer statement again. I'd like you to select a couple of the credit memos and one of the payments, get it under $1,000. I'd like you to add a new credit card so we can observe that, right? Versus selecting one. And oh, for sure. Do the fake one. And then I want to go to the back end and show the records that were created. So I think I saw a 150, a 430 for the credit memos, oh, yeah. and you probably can Great. grab another one under 1,000. There we go. So now there we're we go. Right. Cool. And now we can go and let's just get, add a new credit card, right? So what's this, what are these options here? Make this default and remember. So that will be when the, the treatment you're gonna have it on when it gets into the wallet. That's right. Um, so if I check this, then this will be the default card. Okay. I need to check this to remember the card, to okay. have it saved inside NetSuite. Okay. okay, please do that so we can just see where it is on the back. Um, oh, let's okay. submit now. And, um, and okay, so we're going to see a card that ends with 16. Mm -hmm. Although I think there may already be another card with 16, but we're going to see, um, yeah, we're going to see a new card. The ID is going to probably be a ID3 or it's going to increment. Okay, so let's refresh now. See now yeah. the, the actual payment record. Can you look it up via the, can you cut and paste the PM number on this one here? Just to want to demonstrate that that is the key, right? Absolutely. And then I want to see, well, you had three transactions, two credit memos in there, and there's the amount yeah. to apply. Right. Great. And then of course, and it says the pay method. Great. This is pretty, you know, pretty cool. And then of course, since it's all CRE, the whole experience can be branded, changed, produce the HTML experience. We're also using CRE to distribute the email so we can contain any information that we want that we can get to via search to control the experience, right? And so a lot of, a lot of work went into this flow, which seems relatively simple, but I think we're all familiar with it. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be strange to us, but it certainly is a pretty powerful capacity and we've got a lot of tools now that can go places.